Twenty-seven dollars and some change. Fifteen months later, so they put a total of four and five dollars towards the insurance company. He has a heart attack. And we were able to deliver an eighty-four thousand dollar check. Growing up, we ne I never knew about life insurance. Life insurance was so far fetched. It was that mentality of like life insurance is something that somebody gets if somebody dies. If somebody passes away, the entire family pitches in to put that individual to rest. My guest today is Angel Misty Pagan, going from Humboldt Park, Division, <laughs> teaching salsa to the insurance industry. I'm excited to have you guys here to discuss what your involvement is in the insurance business, why you decided to start this career, and more importantly, what you did for a specific client that probably would have never gotten the financial resources uh, sent to them your, uh, their way had it not been for your assistance. So, uh, guys, you got, you got involved in the insurance industry. Why, why did you guys get in, involved in the insurance industry to begin with? Oh man, I think um, getting involved in the insurance industry for us was, I want to say by accident and kind of like forced into the industry, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, that, that's what it was for us. For us, we kind of, uh, we lost our jobs uh, back to back. First oh. me, then Misty. Um, fortunately, from, from teaching, from teaching. Yes, from okay. teaching. Yeah, we were both teachers at the time. Um, and then fortunately, we, we built great relationships with our students, our alumni and their parents as well. And so in them checking up on us, they, you know, expressed the opportunity. Well, have you heard of PHP Agency? And I must, uh, I must admit, I think I, I turned it down. Uh, Jennifer Lopez and, and Gabby Gonzalez were the ones who initially called us to, to express an opportunity for us. And we turned it down about four times. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah about what did you times. say? I mean, it's like, what did you say? Like, it not was for just, me? Yeah, I was like, no, not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, you know, not for me. I don't think that, you know, that, that, that's not going to work. And I, I remember telling Misty, she was like, oh, no. I was like, no, that's <laughs> definitely not for me. I've never seen myself in the in the industry at all. So I was like, that's not my type of thing. I'm just, you know, the typical objections yeah. that we come across these days. And so, yeah, so that's our story and how we. I mean, the, the phone calls, uh, I mean, uh, Jennifer Lopez, I know it was one point that she called. And it was just something that, um, that struck uh, my heart specifically because at that point in time, my daughter Mia, uh, she was three years old at the time, and she asked, uh, she told me, uh, Bobby, can you take me to Disney World? And um, at that point in my life, I didn't even have enough money to keep my account in a positive state. I was literally checking my account, trying to figure out if I can call PNC to see if we can actually get our wow. uh, uh, reverse uh, uh, overdraft charge. And so here I have this little girl asking me if I can take her to Disney. And so, you know, like any father would, I, I said yes. I said, you know what? Baby girl, I, I promise you, I'm gonna take you to Disney World. So I'm, I, I took a leap of faith in making a promise, and you know, this little girl, she's just like, Papi, do you, do you pinky promise, Papi? Really? Oh, <laughs> so I did my pinky promise to her, and then, you know, and I know that Jen called one last time, and I said, let's, let's give this a shot. Let's see, let's see where this leads, and uh, you know, she came over, she, she presented the business to us, and she said, give yourself an opportunity. You'll be able to bless people's lives, and you'll be able to bless your lives as well, and, the rest is history. I mean, we were able to, we, we became part of the business. Mm -hmm. we, we were going through so much. I mean, like car repossessions, our house was in pre-foreclosure, like every, bankruptcy, everything. Like we were, we were in ruin. And, and how uh, ironic you're getting involved in financial services, Yeah, right? and like, how am I gonna Sounds help like people me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, right. So, you know, in, 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 in a short time here, and we gave ourselves the opportunity where we were able to get our cars back and we got our house in good standing and, my favorite part is that I was able to keep my promise to me, and I took her to yeah. Disney World that same year. I love yeah. it. Uh, um, Misty, um, what were your thoughts? Were, what, where were you, how were you raised with in terms of understanding money and more specifically insurance? What was insurance for? Oh, man. Honestly, like growing up, we ne I never knew about life insurance. Life insurance was so far-fetched. It was that mentality of like life insurance is something that somebody gets if somebody dies. That was my understanding the understanding of my family as well because we didn't grow up knowing about life insurance. We grew up like if somebody passes away, the entire family pitches in to put that individual to rest. And that was my perspective too, growing yeah. up in that environment. So, you know, that's what I fell in love with. It's like the first presentation that I, somebody passes away, the entire family pitches in to put that individual to rest. My late twenties, um, you know, my daughter, three years old, are here raising a family. Why don't more of us know about this? And that's what drew to me, it drew my attention um, wholeheartedly because 
not, even when I presented it to my family, when we were when we were um, you know um, more involved in the business and we started talking to our family about it, um, most of them didn't know what life insurance was about either, or the bigger perspective of what life insurance can really do. In in your in your family's Puerto Rican background, right? Mm -hmm. What what happens? How does the family help pay for a funeral? What, what goes down there? You gotta go to Alvarez Funeral Home. Yeah. That's I was just about to say, <laughs> Alvarez Funeral Home yeah, is just, right. I always say this all the time. It's a, you know, uh, we wait around to pass out the little yellow envelopes. You know, back in the day, we didn't have GoFundMe, which is what we, we encounter now, which is everyone using GoFundMe. But back then was the little yellow envelopes. Yeah. And when you go in, it's just like, well, thank you for coming. Here's a little envelope. And, mm -hmm. you know, and hope for the best that yeah. if somebody puts enough or enough people put in you know, a couple bucks that we can kind of carve away at some of the, uh, the costs. You know, because I'm, I'm thinking about Humble Park, you know, that's the hood. For those of you that aren't from <laughs> Chicago, it's, it's not your, it's not your uh, Beverly Hills type neighborhood. <laughs> Far from it. Matter of fact, if you watch History Channel, you watch Gangland, right? <laughs> they, they talk about a gang that's from Humble Park, okay? Uh, we won't mention a gang, but, uh, but uh, you know, you know the, the neighborhood that you, that you were raised in, the neighborhood that you're in, that you taught in, Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking there right there on, on uh, Paseo, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Right? I can't think of one insurance office, maybe an Allstate, maybe a car insurance SR22. I'm thinking right there in Western, and because my uncle had an um, auto body shop on Western and Le Moyne. Okay. Um, um, I can't think, on that side it was, it was Chi Chi's uh, Arimas uh, Tire <laughs> Repair, uh, uh, yeah. Burrito Spot, and then his, I can't think of one no, insurance. I'm not uh, thinking firm. about it now, no. Can't, can't really. even think of one. Mm -mm. So when it comes to educating the community, uh, how, how did you feel when you're saying, okay, if I can be a blessing to other people, well, first I got to educate myself first. What were some of the things that you had to learn more about so therefore you can find yourself in a position where you explain to others with passion and confidence? I mean, uh, the life insurance industry in itself, just, just really learning the values, the power, um, and the big difference that it can make in people's lives. Um, you know, just, just researching the testimonies of, and comparing the differences between families that were covered with life insurance and how that changed the, tra the, the trajectory of their families and the ones that didn't. Yeah. And seeing the way that they were left behind with just more of the struggle, um, the financial detriment, um, and whatnot, and it, and it just it, it hit home because we, we see it happen, you know, over and over and over in our own families, and we just you know that oh that's the norm, right? You know. So you're both teachers. Mm -hmm. Any time in that curriculum in the school system, did they ever teach about finances? Not at all. Even as a student, as a college student, even not like I understand like high school home economics. I had an early childhood education class in high school, lugging around a fake baby for like six weeks. <laughs> and it's like how I wish that they would have switched that around and allowed me to learn how to balance my checkbook, learn about taxes, learn about, you know, different things of finances versus, you know, how to raise a kid, <laughs> at eight, you know, as a teenager. Uh, interesting. So let's talk about now you are seeing clients. You're, 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 you're seeing clientele. Obviously you went from being a trainee in our system, now running your own agency, right? Which is a huge congrats, right? You know, you're qualifying for equity ownership, all these different things in 2021. So when you're looking at being a difference in your community, talk to us about specifically about uh, the client that um, you just helped, right? The client that you just helped, what was some of, what was some of their uh, situations in terms of uh, them educating themselves of why to buy the policy, um, and then and then getting the policy underwritten and eventually approved. Yeah, so I'll touch on that. So in regards to the client that we help, it was almost like, I don't want to say accidental conversation, but it was one of those things like, hey, I need life insurance. Let's sit down and talk about options. So I sat down with this individual. It was actually his significant other. Um, so I sat down with her. We ran numbers. And then in conversation, she's like, hey, I think he should get a policy too. Mm -hmm. So I was like, of course. So we went through the entire process, um, went through underwriting, and then, you know, underwriting gave us some, some type of, um, you know, issues back and forth because of the form of identification that he had. Okay. He, um, yeah, so moving no, forward. Form, immigrant, foreign national? No, or it was a, it I was think a, it was probably more the, the, the foreign national or a... Because he was a, he's a U.S. citizen, okay. but it was just a, a specific identification, a okay. the identification that I had I wasn't even familiar with. Okay. Um, so going into underwriting, I just wrote a cover letter, right? We put a picture of the, uh, the ID, and I was like, hey, listen, he's a U.S. citizen. Everything cleared up. 
He's in good standing. Social security. Yeah, the everything. Thing. Yeah. Everything was in good standing. Yeah. So then they came back and said, unfortunately, we won't be able to accept it. So I could have easily gone back to the client and said, hey, unfortunately, the insurance company is not accepting your ID. Yeah. So, you know, good luck. But I fought for it. I said, hey, listen, there's no issues with his identification. This is just the type of identification he has. Um, so they, I, we went back and forth like four or five times, and yeah. finally they approved it. Wow. So you so, fought for your client. Absolutely. So before this, did they have any form of education about insurance? Did they have any insurance? No, no not, not at, at all. all. It was actually surprising to them that insure the, you know how we compare the old insurance versus the new life insurance. Yeah, yeah. They're like, we didn't even know this existed. We just assumed that life insurance was good if you passed away or something that you got when you were older. So when I gave him the example of like, well, listen, just like, you know, technology has, you know, has done a huge transformation from like the iPhone and to the, to the smartphone. I mean, I'm sorry, from the beeper to the smartphone. <laughs> right now you're thinking of the beeper version of life insurance. Yeah. And that was like mind blowing to me. Yeah, which still, which by the way, will we'll still work today. Absolutely. I mean, if you have a pager, I mean, you, <laughs> I mean, beep, 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 hold on one second. Right, right. Uh, okay, I gotta call somebody. Yeah. Which is still an effective form of communication today. It's not like it's mm -hmm. not used, it's still right. used, but would you rather have a smartphone instead? Yeah, absolutely. Right? So yeah, that's, that's how you educated them. Absolutely. To upgrade their understanding, it's just not for mm -hmm. dying. Mm -hmm. Got it. So when, when you're seeing clients, uh, are, are, are they also unaware of life insurance meaning more to them not just for going to a funeral. Are you experiencing that? Oh, 100%. Like that I think that, I, I've, I mean, personally, I've witnessed that where individuals are saying things like, you know, I, I always get the, the oohs and ahs of like, wow, I did not know this. You, you know, personal friends of mine, you know, they, they know that we're in the insurance industry and they'll, they'll crack the jokes of like, oh, I'll get that when I'm old. I don't need that now. And so just that, just the lack of understanding. And then you know, we'll say like, well, let me just show you exactly who we are, what we do. And, yeah. you know, if there's anything that we can help you with, then, you know, we'll move forward. And when we have that conversation with them, they're just like, wow, this is like mind blowing. I did not know that you can do this with life insurance or have this type of benefit with life insurance um, and all these extra features with it. And so it, it's always a, a, a kind of like a, a heartfelt moment when you get those like the oohs and ahs yeah. and when you see that light bulb turn on and then you see the yeah. you see that look on their face of like the shoulda coulda woulda like <laughs> i wish i'd known this a long time, a long time ago, ago. yeah so when you sat down with them you found a, a, a policy uh, some coverage mm -hmm. and you found a uh, either a style whether it be term or permit right and what what uh, what came about when it come came, uh, came to affordability yeah so that that's a conversation that we actually just had recently with this client because um, we stayed within a certain budget because of what he could afford. Sure. He, his assumption was that, oh man, maybe I can't afford this, maybe it's too expensive. And I said, well listen, I'm, I, my famous quote is, I'm not here to put a hole in your pocket, I'm here to educate you on what we can do for you. I'm here to properly cover, uh, get you proper coverage. So um, he just gave me a certain dollar amount. He said, I want to stay under $30 a month. I said, awesome, let's do it. So we were able to get him the coverage. It would the face amount was um, the coverage amount was a hundred thousand for exactly like twenty seven dollars and some change. And he had zero before him. Zero. Yeah. Even at his job. Um, I'm not sure. So his job was not offering life insurance, but he did have health insurance. Got but it. he didn't have life insurance. But no life insurance. Mm -mm. Only for medical expenses, but nothing in case you were not yeah. here or need to be. Okay. So 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 talk to us. What happened? So. So he gets insured, it was exactly, um, policy was approved and issued May of 2019. Okay. Fast forward to 15 months later, he ends up getting a heart attack. How old was he? 37. Holy moly. Mm -hmm. Whoever thinks that 37 years old, you get a heart attack. 37, and I mean, I'm, from my perspective, I'm 33. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, we're all, we're in the same age range. I'm 47, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You got your own butt. Okay. So it's okay. like, never in a million years, young, young guy, yeah. you know, like never in a million years would he have imagined experiencing something like this, you yeah. know, at all, especially at his age. Yeah. So his girlfriend called me, you know, explained the situation, and she's like, hey, I, I remember you telling me about living benefits or something within his policy. Yep. Is that something that you can help us with? So, of course, I filed the claim right away, and we were able Explain to living it. benefits real quick. Sure. So living benefits is basically if you suffer from a critical, chronic, or terminal illness, such as heart attack, cancer, stroke, you're able to accelerate up to 90% of your policy. 
um, while you're alive so you don't go through financial ruin than most people go through in a case of an unexpected event. In your experience, did the bank offer this style of insurance? Oh, never. The, 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 the typical Allstate, State Farm Farmers, New York Life, Northwestern Mutual? No. It's only because your entrance into the insurance industry to educate yourself about what's offered in the marketplace and then find out the best companies exactly. for, your, for, your, for, your, for your community where you're able to find the right product that, that fit this type of living benefit style. Absolutely. Got it, wow. Okay, so the, you said less than, so 27 bucks. Yep, $27 and some change. Um, 15 months later. 15 months later. So let me, hold on, let me do the math. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. So I'm doing the math here, 27 times, is it 15 months? 15. So they put a total of four and five dollars towards the insurance company. Yep. He has a heart attack. He has a heart attack. Filed a claim in a few weeks. It was a you know obviously after all the medical underwriting and all that and investigation that has to sure. go through a claim. Because it's less than um, two years. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So it has to go through a medical investigation. It all cleared, and we were able to deliver an eighty-four thousand dollar check. And and I know you had some. You had some reservation about posting online about the, what the power of life insurance does, mm -hmm. but what was the response of your social media network when you said, "Hey, I provided a uh, how, how much a ninety eighty four thousand two hundred twenty two dollars to be exact <laughs> check." What was the response oh to? My oh my God! It was so many. Like you have no idea how many individuals reached out to me. People I didn't mm -hmm. even know. I made my post public. I have people from Texas, Florida, like Georgia, uh, Virginia. Tell me more about living benefits. I didn't even know life insurance can do wow. that. Wow. So it's just the power. And the thing is, we usually, we're really good about posting about yeah. life insurance. Mm -hmm. But people are skeptical either way, right? Yeah. So when they see a testimony, a testimony and a story like that, it's eye-opening. It's very real. And it made me really emotional because... What if I didn't fight for him and I told him, hey, your ID, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. they're not accepting your ID, good luck. You have to fight for your client as if they were your own parents because look at the position he's in now. He's able to properly recover, um, not have to worry about paying or, you know, depending on someone else to pay bills. Yep. It, it, it hits home because it's just very emotional. He's not waiting for a COVID check, no. stimulus check, tax refund, unemployment, Section 8, mm -mm. any of that stuff, Department of Health and Human Services. He's not a burden of a government, mm -hmm. okay? And so... Because he took financial responsibility for himself, according to this death benefit, there's no income taxes that's paid on this eighty four, eighty four thousand dollar. Right, eighty four. Mm -hmm. There's no income tax you pay on eighty four thousand dollar check, right? And so that's part of the big reasons why the life insurance industry has such favorable um, tax uh, consequences. Because if people take personal responsibility for themselves, the government says if you're doing that, you're not a burden to us. Knock yourself out with some tax benefits, but you got to take care of yourself. So, so think about this real quick. In this person's family, how do they feel when they realize that their relative got an eighty-four thousand dollar check, and he wasn't going to be a burden <laughs> on them? I'm sure it's like. Uh, I mean, talking to the girlfriend, she was just a mess. She, uh, you can only imagine they yeah. were going through so much, and she's like, "You have no idea how you know how blessed we feel." Uh, you know, they thanked us so much for even having that conversation with her for taking time. Yeah. Um, because if it wasn't for that conversation, they would have never had coverage. Mm -hmm. And it's just about reaching out to everyone you know, because you never know what tomorrow holds for you. As we wrap up, what, what, uh, what message would we like to say to somebody out there who's watching this video, watching you guys right now? You know, the, this, this former teacher has turned entrepreneurs in the insurance industry, had no background in it before, but you got involved in the industry that makes an impact on other people. I, you know, I, like, I like the fact that you guys are an industry that in order to benefit yourself first, you have to benefit somebody else first. And then mm -hmm. secondarily yeah. you benefit yourself. Because I'm looking at you know, your, your earnings on a $27 a month policy, it's only a couple hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So you earn a couple hundred bucks in commission, but the client got an $84,000 check. Do, they have, do you think they have any problem paying a couple hundred bucks in commission to make sure they have an $84,000 check provided to them in, in this type of situation? <laughs> It's intense. Um, I, I would say, you know, I, I'm, su I'm super glad that we gave ourselves an opportunity. We always say God is good and he always puts opportunities in front of you. Um, and, you know, just having the spirit of discernment and making a good choice of becoming entrepreneurs in, in the financial industry. 
and then just learning the craft. Um, I just feel beyond blessed to be able to continue to be teachers, right? And just teaching a different subject, um, teaching you know financial freedom and being able to educate families on uh, on how to better themselves financially. Still yep, exactly. You're just teaching something different. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a blessing on a blessing. Misty, what would you add yeah, to that? No, I totally agree. Like I would have. Again, going back to when we started, I would have never imagined myself impacting so many people on such in, in this on this platform. You know, in the past, I educated people, I worked with children, and you know, blessed their lives on a different level. But on this level, it's like, man, we're really changing lives. We're really changing our communities from passing down generational debt to really passing down generational wealth and showing people that there is a better way. Think about this. He has a heart attack. He doesn't have the policy. Where would you go to for help? Exactly. You know, uh, uh, is this not, as if it's not hard enough to recover from a heart attack. Mm -hmm. You're worried about food. You're worried about you know getting back and forth from Walgreens and CVS to get your prescription drugs. Now you can easily DoorDash it, <laughs> or or you know however you get things delivered to you your way. You can Uber anywhere. You have a little bit more uh, more uh, more of a situation where there's n there's little to zero financial stress happening to him right now. So, so let me ask you this question. The other remain, remaining, you know, 16, 15, 16 thousand dollars of the policy that remains of that, because it's not like the policy is over with. The policy is still, policy is still intact. So the, the, you know, it's not like the whole policy is, uh, is lapsed. So the cool part about that is he keeps a policy. He still has Fifteen thousand exactly. dollars later on down the road, mm -hmm. you know, in case something were to happen to him when he's in his, you know, fifties, sixties, seventies, and eighties. And I think the cool part about this situation too is, you know, most life insurance companies, after a three, four, five year look back, if he's okay, he could potentially apply for more, more, more life insurance. Exactly. You know, just make sure he's, you know, learn from the situation. Exactly. So, you know, um, uh, our our communities are so. Uh, uneducated, mm -hmm. or at least unaware, or unexposed. Yeah. You, you got to be exposed to something to be educated about it. Absolutely. So uh, there's a there's a couple out there watching right now, and, and they're, they're analyzing what 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 would you say would be the first steps for them to financially put themselves in a better position, just like you have, uh, either looking at life insurance as something they need to have for their own financial home, or considering what you guys have been done uh, have done in terms of getting involved in the life insurance industry. Oh man, I I would definitely. You know, for that couple out there just just watching and listening is just number one is just, you know, give yourself the opportunity. Give yourself the opportunity to, to learn something new um, and not just follow that that stereotype of what you've been, uh, you know, uh, conformed to to following. Um, that's what we did for ourselves. You know, like let's you know, we're in this financial situation. Uh, we're a financial rut. And we, we just took back a, a look back at our genealogy, like, you know, previous, you know, you know, parents, grandparents and things like that. And while we didn't grow up super, super, super poor, um, it, there's there's always room for for change and betterment. Right. And so we just made the choice and say, you know what, let's give ourselves a shot. And then we we are firm believers in life insurance. We see what it does and we have seen what it what um, what has happened to families that don't have it. Um, and, you know, we didn't think in a million years we'd be sitting here, you know, as candidates of, to be, you know, co-owners, AGC owners of, uh, of PHP agency. And it's just super exciting. Um, you know, it's it's not lotions and potions. One thing that I did tell Jen, uh, I'm like, listen, I know I know your parents. I know. And Jonelle is like, I, I taught you. I taught your, your, bro your next brother, your next brother, your sister. And I know your parents. I'm like, don't get me involved. This is something that I'm going to have to lie, cheat or steal. You know, I just I'm just not going to do it. You know, yeah. we've gone through too much to, to get ourselves involved into something like that. And, and when we came and learned about this industry, we we're like, wow, we can definitely do this. And and our our community needs it. We need to we need to make, you know, the hurrah and, and make some noise about this because it's very important. And so that was that's kind of the mission that we held on to. And so definitely encourage anybody else that that feels they have a heart and a passion to help others to, you know, join the crusade. Absolutely. Well, guys, if you've been watching this, what are your thoughts? What are your comments? What do you feel? What's your, what's your uh, comments to Angel and Misty Pagan by making sure that their client is taken care of and, and fighting and advocating for a client? And I'm thinking about all these different websites that people apply through online. They don't know who's on the other side of the phone. Mm -hmm. They don't know who's on the other side of the, the, the email. But here, here's a living, breathing person 
that can understand the situation, empathize with the situation. It's a big difference between buying car insurance or homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance, or in this case, in the situation, buying life insurance and planning for your financial future in case of retirement planning too as well. So what are your thoughts? Um, if you're watching this and you're thinking to yourself, I need to get my financial house in order, or I didn't know about the benefits of life insurance, a couple of videos I want you to watch here. Watch this video here about Dustin and Kenya Frampton here about what happened to Dustin when he suffered a stroke. And watch this other video too here as well with Christian Ortiz, what happened to his mother when she suffered breast cancer. What did life insurance do in their lives? So that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notification to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. And don't forget, make sure you follow Angel and make sure we we'll put the Instagram handles here at the bottom. Make sure you follow them on Instagram and watch them behind the scenes that they do some Instagram stories too as well. And you're gonna have fun with these guys. These guys are always entertaining. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, Angel's other alter ego is my Puerto Rican cousin from Oklahoma. That's right. Primo Pofidio. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, guys, by the way, I'm so glad we have this interview ending on a, a high note outside of what happened to your client. I mean, it could have been a, a tragedy, but uh, thank God they did their job and <clears throat> the client did their job to take care of their financial responsibility and not being a burden to America, not being a burden to the city of Chicago or the family members because they took financial, personal financial responsibility and you should too. That being said, on behalf of Angel and Misty, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue live smart, continue love smart, and be money smart today.